Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own Die Here or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Fab underscore Fan, and you can find a link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Celine. Die here. I always thought I'd die in this session. The words hung in the cold air clung to the wispy puff of white that floated out of tender pink lips and stayed in place, frozen in that moment. Scylla's eyebrows slowly knit together as each syllable echoed in her mind, as her brain carefully plucked the muttered sounds from their glacial cliff and nudged them back together to form the words her lover let loose into the night sky taking in the simple sentence that wasn't simple at all. Her blue eyes ticked over to glance at the blonde seated beside her on the back of the old pickup truck they'd ambled over to after the rest of their group went to bed, and neither one of them were ready to succumb to the gamble of nightmares or restless insomnia. The world was quiet around them, only the clouds and the stars to keep them company. The Dodgers had lent them a small house to rest in for the night as they journeyed farther west, deeper into the session, deeper into the heart of a world Riel once called home, and Scylla remembered as the land where her parents last stepped foot before being viciously stolen from her, where her mother and father were killed. The ragtag group of witches kept moving. They needed to hide to reinforce, to fight a war as fugitives. Before they could take on the Camarilla, they needed to regroup. They needed more than exhausted bodies and spent minds. So they traveled. Now here they were, camped out in a tiny home just past the edge of an equally tiny town, clapboard and weedy garden, fence in need of a fresh coat of paint and a rambling old pickup truck Rael lowered the tailgate on and motioned for Scylla to hop onto. They'd been seated for a while, minutes, hours. Scylla couldn't be certain. The stars sparkled overhead and a rare sense of calm enveloped the couple. For the briefest of moments, Scylla could pretend they were safe that they weren't being hunted, that Rael's photo, along with her friends, wasn't shown on television screens and posted at bus stops. Wanted for murder. That the Camarilla weren't back, that Willa hadn't died to save her daughter, died when Scylla was ready to do the same, sacrificed when Scylla should have been the one to give up everything. That her and Rael hadn't hadn't broken up, that there wasn't still a small, lingering tension between them, that the trust was fully there as it had been when they first met, when Rael promised, vowed to be with her, no matter what anyone else said or did, that she would give Scylla time, that she wanted Scylla, a time when Rael loved her without condition, without regret or hesitation, when Rael trusted her implicitly, when there wasn't an ache in both their hearts, a fear in Scylla's, an agony, grief, guilt, 
When Rael believed in her, even when Scylla didn't deserve it. When she had no reason to, but chose Scylla. Chose Scylla until Scylla showed her who she was really choosing. What she was choosing. Then Scylla chose Rael. And Rael turned her back. But how can someone choose a lie? So many times she wondered what she could have done differently, what she could have said, if she told Rael sooner, about herself, about the mission, about anything, told her. Told her when Porter showed up, told her when they first made love, told her before the wedding. If she ignored the warnings from the spree, her own terror at losing Rael, the inability to fully trust and give herself to anyone that had taken over her soul the second her parents took their last breaths. What if she told Rael she loved her sooner? What if she explained it a little better in that basement? What if... What if she went back for Rael before she left Salem? What if... But what ifs never did any good. It didn't solve anything. What if her parents didn't stay in that house? What if the military police didn't find them that day? What if Scylla never joined the spree? What if... What if Riel never took the oath? What if Willa got her out before? What if Willa chose someone else to bring Riel home? What if... It was all useless. Scylla shook her head at herself every time the thoughts appeared. What happened was done. There was no changing it, no going back. She lied to Riel, broke her heart. Riel walked away from her, didn't stay, didn't listen when Scylla needed her to give her one moment of patience the most. Scylla tried to protect Riel, tried to keep her safe from a spree that wouldn't tell Scylla what was happening, if Riel would be safe. She kept Riel from her mom. Scylla didn't keep Riel safe at all. Willa was dead. The Camarilla was strong, growing stronger every day. The Camarilla had hurt Riel, attacked her. Scylla didn't stick to the plan, didn't take Riel to the meeting spot during the wedding. Scylla told Riel that she loved her, meant it. Then broke both their hearts, and, and Riel forgave her. Riel kissed her, told her she loved her. Scylla never thought it was possible. Riel was, was tough, powerful. She loved so damn hard it astounded Scylla. She couldn't understand it, fully grasp it sometimes. How open Riel allowed herself to be when Scylla closed herself off even harder. Yet, Riel did. She allowed Scylla in once, was hurt. But she allowed Scylla in once more. She chose Scylla a second time. But there was a speck of hurt in her gaze sometimes, a pause in her voice, a quiver in her touch. Riel loved Scylla. Scylla loved Riel. But there was a pain that might never go away. Scylla lived with that every day. Accepted it. Hoped she could assuage Riel's fears. Assuage her own fears. Scylla wasn't going to hurt Riel again. Wasn't going to leave her. Abuse her trust. Riel was the reason Scylla had to survive, to fight, to keep going. The cause was, was her purpose once. It wasn't enough. It had never truly been enough. Scylla assumed she would die, young, fighting, get an ounce of revenge, and let her anger and hate burn bright, let it explode. It was the only way to get out of it. To get rid of the pain. No one knew her thoughts. No one knew beneath a cold, calculating persona was a woman 
wordlessly needing a reason to live, a reason beyond churning rage. Even Scylla didn't know. Not until she met Rael. Until the blonde held her, cradled her against her chest after they made love, sheets tangled around their legs and sweat cooling on their skin. Rael brushed the gentlest kiss to her forehead, wrapped her arms around her, tenderly stroked her arm, and whispered stories about herself. About her home, about the stars and the moon and how the trees looked as they danced in the autumn breeze, how she once had a dog and named her Maingan. She whispered stories as Scylla slowly relaxed, as her heartbeat slowed as her body sunk into Rael's, as she unknowingly gave herself to the winsome, roguish fixer. Scylla never felt safer than when she sat on that beach so long ago, watched the boats sail by, felt the sand sift through her fingers, and the breeze caress her cheek and ruffle her hair. She never felt that safe, until... She fell asleep in Riel's arms. Riel made her laugh, made her happy. Riel made her happy. And Scylla saw Riel's grin, heard her chuckles, felt the touch of her seeking hand. Scylla knew Riel fell for her. It should have been easy, the easiest mark Scylla was ever assigned. It wasn't. They both fell in love. It was the worst possible thing that could happen. It was also the best. Because, damn it, Scylla wouldn't give it up for anything. She wouldn't give up being able to see Rael slowly wake up, cute, adorable, with her hair scattered across the pillow and warm from curling around Scylla's body. She wouldn't give up the gorgeous baby grin that appeared when Riel's eyes landed on Scylla for the first time in the morning. She wouldn't give up any of it. Scylla would protect Riel at all cost, no matter how stubborn and ridiculous the blonde could be. Wetting her lips, Riel's words repeating in her mind, Scylla watched the other witch. I always thought I'd die in the session. Rael didn't look at her, stared out into the darkness. Scylla opened her mouth, but nothing came out. She worked to figure out what Rael meant, what she was talking about. Sniffing slightly, Rael's throat bobbed. When I was little, I never thought I'd leave here. It was home. I didn't... I didn't want to be anywhere else. Her fingers twitched. When my... my mama would leave, I... My dad would drive her to the bus stop in town. Most of the time I'd stay home. We... we would say goodbye and my dad would take her. They never had any time together. Just them. I think... I think they wanted those last couple of minutes. Didn't want me to see them. See them upset. But as the truck would pull away... I'd always follow. I'd run after it, after them. All the way to the end of the road, to where it became paved and headed right into town. Scylla's face fell. Her hand itched to reach out, to touch Riel, comfort her. The blonde cleared her throat. I stopped. I never went past that line, because... because I didn't want to go. I wanted her to stay. If I stayed, she'd come back. She had to. Where else would she go? She scoffed bitterly. I was so stupid. No. Scylla flattened her palm on Riel's leg. She loved you. She wanted to go home to you. Yeah, I know. Riel. Scylla exhaled. Riel shook her head. I... I never wanted to go to Salem. I never wanted to go anywhere. My dad was on the session. Quinn. My friends. It wasn't perfect, but... But it was my life. 
It was where my mama could come home to, where we could be a family, the only place we could be happy. Her lips shivered with a wobbly, self-deprecating smirk. <laughs> I thought I'd be like my dad. Go work in the garage, fix up cars. I could heal people on the side, like Quinn did. Like, like I did when I got older. A few of us played lacrosse on the weekend. It... I thought I'd never leave. We didn't talk much about the oath, conscription. I knew about it. Knew witches were soldiers, but growing up, no one talked about it. Not in the session. Scylla squeezed her leg before slipping her hand up to take Riel's. She laced their fingers and held it tenderly. Most witches are dodgers around here. It didn't seem wrong. It wasn't wrong. It isn't. And the army was so far away. Riel sniffed again. Then Mama died, or we thought she did, and my dad was... a mess. Everything happened so quickly. I took the oath. A tired shrug. I thought I could get it over with. There wasn't anything left. Dad was destroyed. Mom was gone. At least if I died quickly, it wouldn't... My dad wouldn't be sitting around waiting for another call. I'd see my mom. I wouldn't have to deal with what she did. Used up. Kept away from the people I loved. Who loved me. There was a slight pause as Riel took a breath. I didn't want to ever leave the session, Riel whispered. I left so I could die. Because I didn't have a choice. She finally tilted her head. Broken. Shimmering sky met glistening, shattered ocean. Then I met you. Riel grinned wetly. I wanted to take you home. I knew my dad would like you, and... I thought you'd like the session. I knew you. You told me what happened here, with your parents. But I thought, maybe... Maybe you'd see what I saw here. It's not the beach, but it's almost as good. Beautiful in the spring. The fall festival is the best around here. Can't beat the whiskey. <laughs> they both chuckled softly. I thought I'd die here. That, that everything I ever wanted was here. That it was the only place to come home to, but... So, I met you and... The session was never complete. Not really. Scylla's breath caught in her chest. I thought I'd always die here. Rael twisted her hand, joined with Scylla's, lifted until a loving kiss grazed the brunette's knuckles. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll still end up working at the garage, play lacrosse on the weekend. Maybe I'll be deployed every day like my mom was, sent out until there's nothing left to send, Probably won't even make it through this fight. Her eyes held Scylla's. But I want to spend every moment I have with you. A rueful crook of her lips. I love you, Scylla. I love you. A tear streamed down Scylla's face. We'll run away together. Live on the beach. Maybe the session. We could have two houses. Like the High Atlantics. Abigail likely knows a good realtor. Nothing too big. No. Something small. Cozy. Dad'll want us nearby. He likes you. I like him too. Still let the birds say our goodbyes? I think I can arrange that. Please find a fanfiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.